So in this video, we're gonna be talking about light trespass. Now, light trespass is just another form of light pollution that can generally be described as light going anywhere we don't want it, where we don't need it, or, we, or where we don't intend it to be. A perfect example of light trespass is light from a street light passing through a window into a home. Believe it or not, this can actually raise a couple health concerns that we wanna look at. So blue light, for example, most commonly found in LEDs, such as phone screens, laptops, iPads, TVs, basically all the things that we use at night. This light is especially bad because it can actually suppress the brain's production of melatonin. Now, melatonin is a, is a hormone that the brain releases to prepare the body for sleep. And this, believe it or not, is a crucial component of your sleep cycle. So with that being said, in today's activity, we're going to talk about light trespass and some of the effects that it has and how we can solve them. So before we get started with the actual activity itself, we're going to take a look at the issues poster. And this basically sets up the whole premise of this activity. So this is kind of neat because under the light trespass section, you get to pretend that you, the instructor, are the mayor of this town and you receive letters from residents in this town complaining about specific problems that actually have to do with light trespass. So now you as the mayor, you instruct your students, they will be your think tank or your task force, and they're gonna help you come up with solutions to help solve these problems. In this light trespass folder, before you guys get started, you should probably review this because it has a broad generalization or a broad definition of what light trespass is. It gives you some key ideas for them to do a little bit more further research on their own. And it actually has the activity itself. But I think the, the idea that you want to hammer home first is blue light at night and sleep cycles because that sets up why light, tres why light trespass is a problem. So with that being said, what they're ultimately trying to do is use a little bit of creativity and a little bit of critical thinking to ultimately help you solve these problems. And now we're actually gonna take a look at the activity itself. So now I'm gonna show you how we set up this activity. In the quality lighting teaching kit, in the main kit, you're gonna have your light trespassing, your light trespass Ziploc container. And you're also going to have one light trespass envelope. And if need be, there's an instructor's guide in a kit inventory that lists everything that's, that should be in this activity. So in the light trespass envelope, there is the house itself. Yes, you will have to assemble it. There is the grass on which the students are gonna place the house. And there's gonna be two halves of the street, which is going to set up this whole activity. And in the clear Ziploc container, you're going to have the PVC cap. This is actually, this actually serves as the solution to all of these problems. But you're, it's important to note that you're not going to, you're gonna hide this at the beginning of the video so they don't get an idea of what the solution could be. You're also gonna have a ping pong ball with a hole in it. And you're also gonna have a book light. You're gonna have a mini figurine and you're going to have a mini mag light that is gonna be your other source of light. So now that we're gonna set up this house, it's best that you use scissors and an X-Acto knife because, the, because cutting the roof and the window would probably be better with an X-Acto knife. So, but first you're gonna take your scissors and you're gonna cut into the corner. You're gonna cut diagonally along all these dotted lines that are here. So, so now I'm, I'm just going to show you this one because this one is a little trick. This one is a little tricky. So you're going to cut to the left on all of these. So you're going to cut here. You're going to cut here on these dotted lines here and here. But I'm just going to show you how to do this one because this is a little tricky. 
So you're gonna cut this one. Now, when the house folds down, when this folds down together, this is actually going to be folded behind here like this. And this is how you want it. You want these flaps to connect with the adjacent side. This supports the whole thing so you don't have to remake this house every time. You can actually have multiple uses out of this house. So then you're gonna take your X-Acto knife and you're gonna cut your window and you're gonna cut along the dotted line. I don't know if you'll be able to see it when you actually print this out, but there's a dotted line here and you're gonna, with the X-Acto knife, cut along this line, but you're gonna be careful not to cut this side because you just want this flap to open where you can, where you can lay down the figurine and students can see that they can see inside the house. So this is what it should be. This is your final product. The window and the flap and just on this side. So now we can start by setting this up. If you refer back to the light pollution and light trespass folder, um, the students are instructed to place, place the house on the grass some distance away from the sheet and they are going to take their mag light. You're going to unscrew the top of this and please be careful because as soon as you unscrew the top of this, once you take off the reflector part, this light doesn't turn off and this bulb, trust me, this bulb gets very hot. So this actually serves as a stand too for this mag light and you want to put it directly across the street from the window. So you're going to set it up just like this and you're going to take your ping pong ball with the hole in it and, and you're going to put it on here like so. and you're going to take your figurine and you're going to place it inside the house so that he's laying down, laying down in front of the window because that's the whole point of this activity. So now that we got this started, <clears throat> a good place to start with this light source after it's set up is to ask your students thought provoking questions. You want those wheels turning. So you're gonna ask them, what do you see? What are your observations? Where is the light going? Where is it not going? Um, and already, they're already gonna be thinking of solutions to this problem, and that's good, that's a good thing. So you wanna do that with each one. The second, the second light source, you're going to have the bare bulb, and you're gonna to wanna to ask them the same questions. Where's the light going? Where is it not going? However, the third, the final light source is going to be this book light. And I think this is pretty neat because this actually closely models a street light that you would see. So we're gonna place it like this. In the first, in the first book light, you're gonna wanna put it on a 45 degree angle. And you wanna check and you can adjust, and you can adjust the house and the figurine inside. To um, the purpose is just to get, is to let them see that the light is shining on the on the figurine inside. <clears throat> so, for the for the fourth and final one, you're gonna have you're gonna have this street light horizontally, zero degrees. So, a cool way to put this all together is to have them make a table with maybe one column can be each light source. You know, another column can be their observations, what they see, and then maybe a third column is maybe what they think the solutions would be. And then, you know, a couple more columns, like the actual solutions and maybe whether their solutions were right or not. So, <clears throat> we're going to, we're gonna start back from the beginning. And what you're going to notice right away as soon as, like I said before, the first thing that you're going to notice as soon as you put this on, they're already going to be thinking of the solutions that they can have. So you're going to see them, you know, like as soon as you ask them, they're going to be putting their hand in front of it or their paper or a notebook. And this is good. This is exactly what you want. So 
you want them to basically get you want them to basically come to the conclusion that they need to somehow cover this light so it's not going in the house but it's going in the area where they want it to go and that's the street that's we wanted to eliminate the street so then you're going to show them that this is the solution and you're gonna have to hold it because this isn't gonna and in this doesn't, and it doesn't just have to be a PVC cap. This can be anything, like any lids to jars or, or anything. And I actually have a couple examples right here. So anything, anything you find around the house. Something like this, or maybe a smaller light, or maybe like a Dixie cup, or like a dessert cup. And what you can actually do, instead of, instead of like using this, you can actually use the tin foil that's inside and they can tear off a little piece and put it on the inside and even maybe put it on the outside so it's more reflective and it directs the light towards the ground and keeps it out of the house. So and for each one and you're going and you, and you want them to get to the and you want them to come to the conclusion that they need to shade uh, all the light sources. So now we're gonna demonstrate this activity in the dark, the way it's supposed to be. And I'm going to have my assistants turn off the lights. So as this activity is intended to be in the dark, um, as, so as soon as you turn off the lights, you'll be able to see the figurine inside that's illuminated from this light. So as they're running through their solutions, they're, they're, going, to, they're going to quickly come to a solution that that these lights need to be shielded. So as they're, and I can, they'll get creative with their ideas. They can actually use the tin foil. I don't know if you can see that in this shot, but um, you can use the tin foil and tape it to the inside of one of these small cups. And for the bare bulb, this, this shields it and it also directs it down where we need it. So for this, for the book light, you can also, and this one's on a 45 directly across from the window. You can also have them shield this one too to redirect the light downwards. As you can see, it's illuminating the street and not the house. And for the, for the horizontal book light, this one, they can immediately take note that this light doesn't need to be shielded. It's already going where we want it and it's not going where we don't want it. So to bring everything together and everything that they learned, um, you, can, it, you can ask them to make a PowerPoint or a poster, some kind of presentation. So your task force will bring everything, the solutions that they have to this problem and present it to the mayor.